Do, 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 do. Look at the like camera, a turn around. Remix of the classic underground. Yeah, it kind of is, actually. I can see it, you know. As far as the original theme goes, imagine the guy that, like, I don't know who wrote that music, but imagine the guy who came up with the underground theme and said, okay, well, there's gonna be this part in Mario. I'm pretty sure it was Miyamoto, actually, where who came up have... with all this stuff. Think about the way it goes, like, You've got the top side theme where it's like yeah, da, 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 Oh fuck, da, 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 it's Poison da, Cave. And it kinda makes sense. But then you go underground all of a sudden and it's like that okay, well what makes you think of underground? Okay, well maybe dark, maybe a little slower. Hey, it's Monty Mole from Super Mario World, because it's more mysterious. I'm playing whack-a-mole. But like how do you get to the point where you think, okay, here's an underground thing, let's try da 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 it's kind of ominous, actually. Da, 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 da. And it, this part makes sense. It's simple, but it makes sense. But how do you get to the part where you're like, oh, jeez, I don't know what to do next. How about... It's only like a 30-second theme, but it works really well. It's just so... I mean, you, you see the, what I'm saying? Like, it's, the impulses are strange. Yeah, it's not like it's not like a standard musical beat. Anyway. Yeah, well, it's, it's just not regular. It's just like you have this kind of regular ominous kind of tune, and then you end it with this weird little rhapsody. Jello bats. Yeah, fucking bats everywhere in every game. Can't escape them. If there were astronauts... Russian astronauts made out of jello, could we call them Cosbynauts? Cosbynauts? Yeah. You, you, you went there. That needs to be like a comment poll. Cosby Knots? Like, Cosby Knots, anybody has a better idea? Post. Comment. Did I... I think I fucked that up again. I... Yeah, I'm not supposed to go this way. Fun. Oh, there's a game coming out. Uh-huh. Uh, I think it's independently produced. It's like you play as, um, that dog that the Cosmonauts sent into space, Laika. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure it's called Laika Boss. <laughs> really? Really? Or I may be confusing this with another game. There may be more than one, believe it or not. But in this So there's one... just a door and fucking... up here? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope I don't get hit by that fucking bat that came right for me as soon as I walked in. But there's this game, you, you play as the Russian cosmonaut dog, and you yeah, actually... Yeah, I like it. Uh -huh. And you pull off all these crazy space missions. Oh. But I mean, it's like sci-fi stuff, like, I, I think it's like you have to, like, defeat aliens and, like, upset yeah. some kind of conspiracy or something, but you... Know, <laughs> okay, you play, like, whatever. You play the whole game as, like, a... That's... It's a depressing story, if you think about it. Oh, no, no. You know, they're like, okay, here's this dog, it's a really nice dog, everyone's like, you know... Well, it's just so eerie, because it's just, it's so obvious why they did it. It's like, we were afraid of what would happen to us if we went into space, so we sent other things that didn't have a choice. You know, we, 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 we test stuff on animals all the time, I mean, we sent a, you know, the Russians sent a dog, we sent a chimp. You know. Ham. Yeah, it's... It's just, it's kind of a thing where you just kind of, you, you think about what happened and the dog died from fucking, like, space radiation. Well, it's like they, they didn't really have a plan to get it back, as I understand it. Either. Yeah, you know, it's like it just kind of starved in space. And I'm pretty sure it was the same case with Ham. I don't think they really had a plan to get him back. They're just like, can, can something live in space for an amount of time? And yeah. the, the answer was, yeah. And they're like, okay, we can proceed from there. And then it's just like, okay, well, good for us. Sucks for the animals. Sorry, bro. Sorry, chimpy. I want to... Where am I going? This place is such a bizarre architecture, and it's been too long since I played. I think this is where I'm shooting. The way that those lanterns are shaped keep throwing me off, because, like, the impulse oh, wait, is no. to jump and hit them and get coins out of them. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're cubes. You just go right through you them. You just pass right through them. Developers are just like, just leave it, make it absolutely not even a guess. Just let them know. You can't touch those. You can't touch this. <laughs> no mushrooms. Yeah. No, no, no. Like I, I, I don't know. Animal testing is one of those things where I don't really see a good alternative. You know, you're it's, either. Yeah, it's it's a rough. So I don't. I'm not really like fun. I, I'm, I'm not really sitting here like yes, we should you know pry the nails out of dogs' fingers and no, stuff. No, either. 
It's like, I like animals, but it's like... The, the alternative is... I mean, for most of human history, it was pretty much a matter of, well... Shit. Jeff ate the bad mushrooms and died, so I guess nobody else is gonna eat the Or, bad you know, let, let's eat the pig that's been rolling around in mud and not sanitized in any way. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... that's, like, hey, that's isn't that, like, how kosher rules for food came about in Judaism? I think it actually does have something to do with, like, how pork or pig... Oh, oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. What was that? This is a really strange level. I haven't been paying that much attention consciously, but... Uh, yeah, it is pretty strange. Now that I am, I'm kind of... What? I... You know that little... Where am I? You hear that tapping that... You hear that? Yeah. There was an episode of Spongebob where Gary clicked his eyes together. Yeah, I remember that to one. To attract the jellyfish, and it was the same beat and the same sound. Do you think... Do you think maybe uh, the Spangbab creators uh, stole from Mario 64? You know, it may seem like a stretch, but then when I think about it, it's really not. Considering all the creepy shit in Mario... Mm -hmm. Spongebob am I even, like, looking for something in here, or am I just wasting my fucking time? I don't know. Because I feel like I'm wasting my fucking time. See, I'm at liberty just to yap about whatever. Please do, I mean, like, yeah. So that's what... I I haven't- I've just kind of been watching and just... <laughs> Marveling at my lostness. I'm not bored. Just watching Mario, like, backflip around. Accomplish tasks that will do him no good. Yeah. Ultimately. Fuck! I hate this shit sometimes. A lot of video games are actually kind of existential. Really, you think so? Whether they well, I mean, whether they mean to be or not. Oh. Like Mario, it's kind of like, yeah, you need to save the princess, but it's like, you ever wonder like, what's really gonna happen to her if you don't? Bowser will get it on, <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But it's like, you're given no reason to care. Maybe I can wall jump up there. I mean, Bowser's kind of crafted to be. Yeah, I did it. Kind of that generic like. He's almost like the video game ethnic other. <laughs> Whoa. Well, I mean, you don't- you have no sort of frame of reference to understand what Bowser is or why he does what he does. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you're saying. And it's like Mario at the same time- Oh, this is a red coin chamber. What the fuck am I doing in here? <laughs> oh, those have no tops. Huh. <sighs> of course it would do this to me. Game, why, why do you do this? I might suicide if I can't get out of this fucking chain. Yeah, it's like, you can't grab that ledge, so you'll just be like, Ugh! There we go. Oh, okay, that's why I can't grab it. It's oh. a fucking slope top up there. Oh, it is? Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! He would have so much more energy if he would just shut up. <laughs> I, I guess he would. You know, like, when you're exercising, it's like, you ever just go jogging? You try to jog next to somebody and talk to them at the same time, it's exhausting. Yeah. Because you, you're you breathing through your mouth. Yeah, it's like you need that oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> for your limbs. Okay. Your for communication. Maybe I should read this fucking map. <laughs> it's kind of a last ditch ever. Ah, uh, maybe I can hit him. I mean, like, sometimes, like, the, like you know, you watch the Game Grumps and you're like, come on, just read the fucking tutorial. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But other times I'm kinda of like, oh this tutorial is boring as shit. <laughs> it's, you know? It's 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 an exercise. This is the way I'm I remember now. You gotta dodge the boulders as they roll forward. This is kind of a doing less plays is kind of an exercise in getting in somebody else's shoes. Yeah. There we go, this is where I wanted to go. You take this elevator down and it takes you to an underground lake. So Fucking okay. I I wish. Yeah. Because, like, I, I was gonna be like, ooh, this is the level where you find Dory. Torpedo Ted Turner. <laughs> what? What? Torpedo Ted Turner? Are you trying to say you kill Ted Turner? Are you saying you don't like, uh, Captain Planet? I'm making random associations. Oh, okay. Have we hit that time of the night already? Uh, we're getting there. Yeah, see, this is Dory. 
Ew, I don't like that. It's the Loch Ness monster. It's, I don't know, man. Look, see the see the limbs in the water. Isn't it cute? The only reason you know it's not gonna kill you is because it's got anime eyes. It's got the beady eyes. It's just that like watery, like that super moistened. Yeah, like or there's just someone shining a light right in it all the time. But there's something else to it. Do you, you notice how it sinks when I stand on it? I just I don't know when. I, you when see that? Doesn't that freak you out? It's almost like the treasure chests in Zelda. You, you want to know what's you want you know what's saddening though about this? Huh. If you want to get up on, if you want to get higher on Dory, you have to hurt her. Actually, well, actually, there's actually a lot of sad things about this. The fact that she's stuck in this underground cavern and there's no discernible way to get out ever. Not to mention just like there seems to be no discernible food either for oh, her to yeah. eat. There's just oh, there's something about. I think this is the metal hat. Yeah, there we go. Something about water levels in games, especially when you can swim around freely in large bodies of water, and there's something large in the water with you, and you're not really sure if it's dangerous or not yet. There's just it's just got agoraphobia written all over it. Yeah, you know what I mean. Not the crowd thing, but the open, the big wide open spaces, whatever that is. Yeah, that's agoraphobia. If you're afraid of wide open spaces. That's kind of a weird thing to be afraid of. Or, well, at least it seems like that way to me. But then I again, that is me. It's strange, though, because... Something that we learn in um, anthropology is, like, when people are shown pictures of landscapes... Mm -hmm. They feel more comforted by landscapes that they can see a lot of. Like, you know, like big rolling hills, like in the American Midwest. Uh, you know, or, or the Great Plains, rather. So where things are clear and visible. Yeah, where you can see something coming from a long way away, right? But yeah. then people get like that agoraphobic, agoraphobic feeling when they're in the wide open ocean and they don't, and like, it, you have such a wide view that you really can't see. You can't see anything meaningful. But it's like, you wonder, like, is there something below me that can see me? Yeah, like, if you can't see into the water at a certain point. Yeah, so it becomes more of, like, I'm completely exposed. You know, like, I don't have the jump on the potential danger. Like, it's got to jump on me. Yeah. I can see that. The Metal Mario music is kind of cool, though. Ding, 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 ding. So, yeah, I just unlocked the metal hat after looking for fucking Dory. <laughs> One of the castle's secret stars! Yay. Yeah, I can fight Bowser now. I back. couldn't resist because you said Dory. There's, um... Pixar's doing a movie just for Dory. Wait, Dory? Did you ever see Finding Nemo? Oh! Oh, yeah, 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 that okay. Dory. Okay, I was confused um, for a second there. I was yeah, like, I, was, I, I didn't clarify, but... Um, they're doing one just for her or whatever, and I think it's called Finding Dory. Because we needed another sequel to that story. Yeah. Right? That aside, there was there was some big deal about it. Like people were upset, or like PETA, somebody got PETA. Upset. Really, PETA? Well, somebody made a big deal. They were like, "Oh, you know, you really shouldn't be." I guess it's in the wake of a bunch of Sea World controversy, but it's like part of the movie involved, um, like the ending. Of the movie involved fish finding a home at a place kind of like Sea World. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. And because people made the argument and got all pissed off and said, oh, yeah. SeaWorld's a shitty place for a fish to Yeah, live. I mean, they're like... And, well, I mean, that, that argument's really not my issue. It's just... That's kind of like, it's, okay, well, it, it, Here's the thing is, Pixar changed the ending of the movie, allegedly, uh, to where now the characters have an option to leave if they want. But they did it just because of this outcry over, like, SeaWorld or whatever. And you're just kind of like, that, yeah. yeah, that's the part I have a problem with. Is like when, you that's know, why you need the metal hat. Something happens, and they're like, oh, we probably shouldn't say that in the wake of this. And it's like, well, you know, you didn't make that movie specifically because that happened. Yeah, it's, it's, it's I guess it's kind of apologist in nature. It's kind of a rough thing because it's you got to make money because you've spent you know three months for a server farm to render your movie and yeah. then all the labor for that. And but see, people don't understand that. Like, you know, it's kind of an afterthought to people. Like, if you don't work on the movie, it's kind of like the last thing you think about is, oh, well, the artists need to make money. It's a lot of work. 
But, you know, nobody really thinks about that. Yeah, like, there's a whole living concern to be had here. I don't know. It's... I don't think it's a simple issue, and, like, it... W works of art are compromised by the circumstances in which they are made. Yeah. It's, and, a, it's, it's I mean, it's not even close to a simple issue. It's just... It's just I don't know. I just... I guess I get sick of just... I get sick of seeing art make compromise just because of something like that. It's it's a weird. I guess it comes across as a weird form of censorship. Yeah, like like you're not saying something just because you're afraid it's gonna rub somebody the wrong way. But at the same time, what's funny is part of the reason that you know they're doing that is actually to make more money. Because there are certain people, for whatever reason, that will not go see a movie for some reason like that. Yeah, like, that's that's always something that struck me as weird. It's like, I disagree with this, and I'm like, so then it, who cares if you disagree yeah, with it? It's not it, about disagreeing with it. But then it. it starts to become, like, a conflict of interest, almost, where it's like, okay, so you're gonna sort of change your movie or even censor it so more people will pay to see it, but it's like you're convincing them to pay to see it on false pretenses, <laughs> like... You may not even be doing it because you honestly believe in it. Yeah, I mean, I yeah. don't know. It's like, not all movies are made with the intention in mind that the artist truly believes that they're doing, like, great work or work that needs to be seen. No, certainly not. Yeah. But it's just kind of weird that people would, people would assume that someone is doing it, you know, for a noble reason not, and not just to try and get more people in the theater. Yeah. So they're like, oh, I'm so glad they made that change. That means they're really conscious about... Eh, not necessarily. It probably just means that they're trying to draw more people into the theater and make their money back on production costs. Yeah. Like, it's not cheap. You know, like, your average Hollywood films, like, what, $100 million? Oh, yeah, they're crazy expensive. Yeah, I have to wonder where half that money is going. And is it really just actor fees and royalties? Uh, that's why I think a great majority of them, though, are just paid for by investors. Like, a lot of them wouldn't get off the ground if there weren't just people with money that want to see them made. But, of course, they're expecting money to be made back. You know, they get returns. Yeah. So, that's why when you get a flop, that's why it's such a big deal. Yeah. It's, it's not because the movie wasn't successful. It's because there are a lot of people who just are... They're out a ton of money now. Yeah. Kind of the same with games, but instead of having investors, you have publishers. Yeah. And the publishers kind of take the loss. And it, it's kind of a weird thing, because they're... Like, games often require massive budgets now. And, like, sometimes you wonder, like, well, couldn't this be a lot better if we didn't have to deal with, like, some oversized bloated budget with a lot of publisher overhead? Well, that's but at the same time, the publisher is the, is the group funding, you know, 100 artists, 100 coders, 20 developers, a bunch of QA types. Yeah. All this other stuff that is needed for something like... A, like, have you seen Assassin's... Assassin's Creed 3 credit scroll, it's like 40 minutes long. Oh, yeah. And they needed all that people to get the game out in, like, what, a year and a half that it took two years yeah. to make it? Well, and I guess the other argument would be, you know, you technically don't need that many people to make a good game. You need that many people to make a game that has, like, really... It has a bunch of assets. Like, yeah, you think the, about it... Yeah, the more little... The more you... The more detail and more exactly. things it's, you concern about... It's detail. Yeah. It's not necessarily uh, necessities. You know, it may just be you want your graphics to be just crazy impressive. Yeah, you want you want Altair's cloak or Connor's uh, hatchet strikes to hit a certain way. Yeah, and it's like, in that case, you're adding tons of people. But I, I think this kind of gets into, like, the whole independent publishing movement that's going on right now. And like all the arts, especially video games. Mm -hmm. And I've never made a video game, and I know that they're probably a lot more expensive to do independently than any other kind of art, just kind of by default. Well, they're hard because you need multiple kinds of assets unless yeah, you're making like a text adventure game. It's a multimedia project, and you need yeah. people who are either... You either need a bunch of people who each know how to do like one thing, or you need somebody who knows how to do a bunch of things. Yeah, like I've I've made text adventure games before, and it's like you have to learn how to script. And scripting is like coding light, where you don't have to come up with the, the raw systems that handle uh, coordinates and 
and stuff like that, but you still need to come up with state change variables, and you need to track everything, and you need to make it so that it all displays properly. So, like, if yeah. you have a story event that happens, you need to make sure that the dialogue happens properly, and if there's item interactions in your system, then you need, you need to make sure that every possible interaction is accounted for. And, you know, that requires you to study state machine. But it's like, even with all of that, you still don't have to have millions of dollars to invest in a video game to make a good video game. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like, there'll certainly be uh, noticeable shortcomings or details that are omitted. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you may have to go 8-bit, 16-bit, whatever. Or not even that, it'll be like your the scope of the game is not a gigantic city that you can do whatever the hell you yeah, want. Yeah, no, obviously you're not going to be like putting out stuff like, you know, downloadable content and like online support, and, you know. Yeah, like, the, not just that kind of scope too, but it's like a, Assassin Creed's three cities are huge, you know. Yeah. In their detail, like saying, it's, it's, it's someone had, detail. someone, some tester... Some poor guy had to walk around every square inch of that city and make sure that all the ledges that were supposed to be climbable were climbable. Yeah. You know, and that's just, that's rough. Because you think about how many possible surfaces can be climbed on in that game, and you're just like, oh my god. You know, like, think about it. Every fence, every side of a building, every uh, other part of a building that can be climbed... Uh, you can go through certain buildings, and you got to make sure that every, any possible way you can run up to a building doesn't cause the, the system to break or glitch. Oh, yeah. Or do something stupid. And not even climbing. You just got to make sure that they can't clip through places that they can't... Yeah, you know... And on some... top of that, you have to make sure that they can't cheat the paths that you intend for them to take. It's like thinking like Left 4 Dead, you know, the roller coaster glitch. Yeah, I remember until glitch. they patched it, but you know, there used to be um, in, in a Dark Carnival, it was like um, there was a panic event where you had to run through the the screaming oak roller coaster, but um, there was a glitch, or not, not a glitch, but there was a um, yeah, it's proper, not a glitch, it's a, a proper mapping problem where they um, you could walk up the side of the roller coaster and then forego the entire uh, panic event. Yeah, it's like if you knew how to like say right along the correct invisible walls, you could climb them. Yeah, you could climb That's up the you could climb up the struts of the roller coaster. And if you got everybody up there, I mean, granted, you would still get you know a couple zombie mobs here and there and a couple special infected, but nowhere near what you would get in the panic event. Yeah, and if you got everybody at the top of the roller coaster, you or can if one story. person managed to get through it, then you wouldn't. Ha that all they would have to do is stand by the deactivation switch, and then you could just wait for the, the zombie panic event to end. Yeah, and at the very worst, you get a guaranteed person in the safe house. Yeah, because you could just open up the you know the safe room, and then sit in there while you you know. But it, you know, it kind of it broke the intended difficulty of the game, and it took like years for it to get patched because it was just sort of like a non-issue I guess yeah like it's like this is not worth fixing and the people who do know about it it's like whatever but then they finally did patch it and I felt sad because I, it was like this was something I had grown accustomed to like, I expected to do it in every single time yeah so that's the funny thing is you know when you get a glitch or even just kind of a minor you know mapping issue like that when it's not resolved for long enough, you get used to it. It becomes part of the game. I mean, you, you know, you get to yeah, like um, like Street Fighter Two, um, combos and canceling were a glitch in the system that the testers discovered, but they left it in. Yeah. And from that, we have the modern day fighting scene because of it. That's but right. you know, that's not something you would have gotten without you know all sorts of weird programming yeah, like a, issues. A quote unquote mistake, if you want to call it, or just something that was just overlooked. Uh, or just outright unintended. Where's the seventh red coin? <laughs> Fuck.